Here we go. Money talk. Here comes the money. Money, 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 money. money. <laughs> dollar, dollar. Dollar, dollar. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Easy Dubs podcast. Uh, I got a co host today. We got boss man Lewis Burek on today, uh, helping me out a little bit. He's probably going to be running the show, but um, we got a guest on as well. We got Nick Dayus. Um, he's got an incredible story. We're going to kind of dig into the background, dig into kind of what makes him special as a capper and, um, maybe on the kind of in the outskirts of, of what he's doing. Um, talk a little bit about the circa millions, um, go over that and then just kind of, kind of roll through and ask him some questions. Nick, thanks for coming on. Excited to have you. Thanks, man. I appreciate that intro. I'm looking forward to this. Got a chance to meet Lewis, uh, I guess in person, if uh, that's what we talk about now with these Zoom conversations, but it was nice to connect a face to the social media that I've been talking to. Nick, great to have you on. Everybody at home, follow Nick on Twitter at Nick Deus 10 the lamb. Uh, why don't we start there with the the lamb nickname and, and more broadly, just walking us through Nick Deus, your your Twitter persona. Very unique in this industry where there's a lot of avatars and graphic design and fake names you presenting authentically as yourself is almost more unique than any avatar you could find so would love to just get uh share your story with with the folks listening both the lamb and 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 nick deus the man and uh go from there yeah so Growing I'm I'm originally from Queens, New York, born and raised. I just moved to Las Vegas about three weeks ago. We'll get into that in a little bit. But growing up, I had a huge friend group, and I still have the same group of friends for about two decades now. Um, there were four Nick D's in our friend group. Uh, so in order to differentiate everyone, everyone got a nickname. There was uh, Little Nick because he was the youngest. We called one of our friends Boss. And me being Greek, and I was also the oldest, originally I was Big Nick. And then I became Lamb because for Greek Easter, we eat the lamb on the spit, rotisserie style. And I just took a picture with my family and my friends just found it hilarious as friends do. And then it just kind of stuck, dude. And even like my, my mom calls me lamb and a, like a lot of my family does also, which I guess is cool, right? Everyone want to be a goat, but there's only one lamb. So that's what I like to say with that. Fantastic. And so that covers lamb. Now tell us about Nick Deus um, and kind of how you came into this wacky world of, of sports and gambling Twitter and, and the, the great work you do on air and, and in social media previewing recapping games how'd you get uh involved in this in this crazy world and uh where are you spending most of your time today i mean dude i i was i was kind of born into betting to be honest with you uh my father is a gambler and as i've gotten older we've kind of wear like as a badge of honor you know growing up it's like that's not what you should have your kid doing or, or showing him the ropes or whatnot but i'll never forget dude i was seven years old and my uncle came up to me with a parlay card. He told me to pick four games. I picked four winners. Comes back the next week, gives me $20. I was like, oh, shit, this is, this is easy. Spoiler, it's not easy. It's definitely not that easy. So ever since then, I just, like, I became fascinated with that, with that aspect of sports. And I always felt from a young age, I was always a sports dude in my friend group. And then especially when it came to the actual sports betting stuff, I used to have teachers in high school come up to me and ask me about things. Like I was like very into the sports betting stuff. Um, I've done it all, man. Like, and if you've done it with, with, if you've been in sports betting that long, like I've dealt with the shady bookies. I've, uh, I know how it was frowned upon. It was the giant elephant in the room that people just ignored, but everyone was doing it. And you just always knew that I, I have a take that I feel like if you're a sports fan, you're a gambler also. Like one way or another, there's no one that's a sports fan that doesn't bet. You play fantasy, you play daily fantasy, you you like parlays, whatever it might be. If you're wagering something to get a return, you're, you're a degenerate like all of us are. So about well, just emotional six, capital as a, as a lifelong Cubs fan, you know, letting <laughs> uh, the, the team steal your sleep and peace of mind. 
listen, man, you're talking to a diehard New York Knicks fan, and all I've had has been <laughs> Lynn Sanity for three weeks and a, a Carmelo team that lost to Roy Hibbert in the playoffs. So it's it's been rough for the boy too. So I got into content creating about, I'd say about eight years ago. A friend of mine started a blog. I hate writing. I'm not good at writing. I can't even put uh, properly formatted tweets together. If you want me to write an article, I'm not doing it. I've had opportunities in the past to work with companies to write articles. I'm like, I just can't. Uh, it's just not for me. It's not fun. I like being in front of a camera. I like being in front of a microphone. That's where I feel is, is my strongest suit. So we started a blog that wasn't working out well for anybody. And then we caught like the podcast wave early on 2015. Started my show Veterans Minimum with a couple of other buddies. After a year and a half, I went on like a wild tear, dude. That first year, we were picking three games at the end of every show, 2015. I picked 77%. And like, if you know, if you know sports betting, you know that's like... I was on mute, but I said, holy shit. Right, but that's like a career year, right? Like 77% is out of control. But it was also three games. But anyway... Fast forward, that first season ends, and for the next year, I branched off and started my own betting show called The Degeneration Bets. As you can see, I'm a wrestling fan. If, if this is on video, I, I love wrestling. So Degeneration X growing up, I called it Degeneration Bets. We're all degenerates. And slowly but surely, that show started picking up a lot of momentum, and we were getting articles written about us. Uh, me and my co-host, Impy, at the time, we were doing all these like spots because sports betting was still very new and I still feel like it's very new. Uh, it is more public and more accessible and people don't feel as like slimy and shady if they gamble as they did three years ago. So I started doing that and I would just look at, I would always bring a betting perspective into sports. And I felt like that's what made me unique because yeah, anyone could tell you that the chiefs are going to beat the Colts but are they going to beat them by more than six and a half points? That's where it gets interesting. And I was always fascinated by how lines moved. And this guy's not playing. The line moved two points. Like, why did it move that much? So it was always a way to be different in a very oversaturated world of sports media. I became very good at just understanding and comprehending sports betting. I want you to tell the listeners at home a little bit about your process because I think that makes you super unique. And we talked about this the other day, Sunday afternoon, turn the phone off and just jam out with the notepad. Every capper, every sports expert, every sports media analyst that we talk to is all about being in your face on game day. How is kind of your approach different and, 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 why does it kind of fit your authentic style? Yeah, that's a that's a great perspective that you're presenting to me because I get a lot of heat from people I work with with the Blue Wire Network where my podcast is affiliated with, and they tell me that I drop the ball on capitalizing on the current events going on, right? Like everyone's on their phone for a red zone. Everyone's on their phone for a Sunday night, Monday night, Thursday night football. I'm the complete opposite. I'll chime in during a commercial break. A lot of times I'll say something like, holy shit, that was a great throw by Herbert, best throw he's ever made. And it was like 15 minutes ago. But it's like, that's when the commercial break came about. Because, and, and look, I, I feel like everyone works hard in one way or another, but I really like, I'm nonstop, whether it's working out, whether it's content creating, whether it's research, like I'm 24 seven balls to the wall. On Sundays, I like to chill. And I'll put out a tweet, you know, like good. I call all my fans legends. Like growing up, legends was a term that if like our neighborhood, you got called a legend, it was not a good thing, right? You're not a legend like Derek Jeter. You're more like a legend like, you know, this dude just got arrested because he shoplift kind of legend. Like he's a moron. So the term, I call everyone legends. So I'll put out like a tweet like, yo, good luck, legends. Here are the five picks or whatever it might be. So I just like. I watch I watch sports by myself, especially red zone. Uh, I like I'm over there. I have my phone. I do have my phone on me, and I'm on notes. You know the notepad, or I'll write stuff down. And I really just like 
to take it all in and enjoy it as opposed to being on my phone. And it's just something that it's very relaxing for me just to sit back and do nothing. Don't be on social media when it comes to that. Cause I'm on it for six days a week. I'm, you know, my phone, my screen time is if it's under eight hours, it's a surprise. You know what I mean? It's like, hold on. I didn't work hard enough because all my contents on social media, you found me through social media, you know? So it's like a gift and a curse. And I do need a little bit of that escape. I don't want to sound like someone that shits on social media because it's given me everything that I have. So I do use that one day. I'm at my core. I love football. So I, I like to take that time to really enjoy it. So that's my, that's my Sunday notepad process. It's really interesting because it's also a film study day, right? And if you're yeah. on the yeah. phone the entire day creating content, you're not absorbing and learning and doing your research in the same way that you are when you're in your, your happy place on the couch with the notepad out. I mean, in many ways, the, the media, the sports content guy like yourself, it's no different than being a player and in your film room, you're not going to be in the, the defensive coordinator's film room on your phone tweeting about what you're watching. You're focused on the game. Yeah, and it's also because I record on Mondays for my show. So I don't want – I have – right now I have two monitors that I'm looking at, and oftentimes – I'll have my TV on red zone and then I'll be flipping through certain games. You know, I, at certain times I'll have all the games up at once. So I like just like watching and I'll turn the volume off certain things. I'm a Giants fan. So now I have to have direct TV <laughs> because I can't watch them over <laughs> here in Nevada as I could back home. So, yeah, man, I, I like watching it uh, a lot, you know, and, and it's a way for me to I have to watch it because then when I go on my show to talk about it, and my show is mostly sports, general sports talk, and there is a lot of betting involved in it. But I need to have like my takes prepared and whatnot. So I, I never talk about things I don't watch. Like I have no problem with saying, dude, I didn't watch that game. So I can't tell you. Why don't you tell me? And then off that I'll have a conversation. So I it it is a day for me to really take it all in and be prepared for when I have to talk about it. There's a lot I want to touch on in there. So, and I want to br kind of bring it back to the wrestling thing, if you don't mind. Um, sure. You're a big wrestling fan. I think because you're a media personality, because you're a content creator, in many ways, that's a similar story to the, the, the pro wrestler, right? And especially because you're giving out plays as well. And I tell anybody who, who knows anything about handicapping or wants to learn, it, it's not dissimilar from pro wrestling, right? There's these large personas that say interesting things. Sometimes they win, sometimes they lose, but they build followings because they're, they're engaging and they're interesting. And, and your persona is unique because it's so real and authentic. And even forget about handicapping for a second, just sports media personalities and the talking heads you see on any different channel, whether it's local talk radio or ESPN, where everything's about being over the top cartoon character mm. how have you kind of found your voice and to your point it's very real you, you've got takes because you watch everything and you have a perspective that's unique and authentic how have you kind of been disciplined with that voice and uh authentic in a very crowded noisy world that is sports media so i think What's interesting, and if I could tie it into sports betting real quick, I think one thing that you do see in national media and these big talking heads is because sports betting has become so popular now and you have every sports book is affiliated with a team or a network, you used to not be able to say what the line was for a game. Now, if you don't say it, it's like, what is wrong with this person? So you have to have a take on that. And like what I said previous, I don't talk about things I don't know. I could tell you about the Mets. I can't tell you about the shortstop for the Padres. I don't follow baseball like that, right? So I never talk baseball. I'll have fun segments on my show like, oh, yo, dude, $400 million for a pitcher who plays 40 games a year? Like, that's kind of crazy. And then I'll have my friends on who are baseball people be like, yo, you know, it's very valuable, this and that. So that's how I touch on certain things that I don't know. As far as finding my voice, 
I've always kind of been like, I beat to my own drum. I, I don't really, I kind of just like what you see is what you get. There's no difference between me and conversations on here on my podcast and then out of it. I don't know how to turn it on or off. Cause I'm like, I'm kind of always just the person that you see. So it's very easy for me. I don't have like a persona. This is just like who I am. And I don't, I try not to do like, you know, this is the hot take era having like a crazy take like, Oh, LeBron James sucks. It's like, well, clearly he doesn't, but now you've just cultivated this entire brand and persona that this is you. So I have, I have takes, I stand by them. I'm very open to having information change that. Like I'm not married to my takes. And one thing that really gravitated to gravitated the audience to me was like, I love making fun of myself. If I have a bad week, which bad weeks are going to happen. If you are in this industry, whether it's the sports media industry or the sports betting industry, you're going to have bad, bad weeks, maybe even a month. Right. And it's like, that's why it's authentic. You know, like I, I post funny memes of like Conor McGregor when he lost to Nate Diaz. I don't know if you guys are UFC fans, but he's being interviewed and he's like, I've been humbled. I've been silenced, but I will bounce back and I will persevere. So like when I have a, a two and seven week, I'll put up like a funny meme like that. Like we've been humbled, you know, we're 10 and all right now through the first two weeks, but we've been humbled if it's a shit week coming up, but that's just it, man. Like some people, I think they take themselves too seriously. I think they, they have people in their lives on a grander scale that won't tell them that they're wrong because they need them. Like I have, you know who my harshest critics are? My childhood friends and my parents, like my parents would to this day violate me when I say some dumb shit. So they keep me grounded. And it's the same thing I've used that to apply. I've used that to apply to like how I do my content, man. I have no problems if people hit me up and they're like, yo, nice pick. It's like, yeah, shit happens. What, what can I do? But just know that I lost money on this too. Not just you and your $20. Like I've lost money on it also. So when you do come at me about a bad, bad play, like, just know that the boys' pockets are being hurt as well. Well, that's enough about being humble and authentic. Now it's time to brag. Circa Sports Millions, Circa Millions Contest, I think is what it's called. Tell people uh, a little bit about the overview of the contest, picking five games against the spread in the NFL every week. And, and more importantly, tell them about the 10-0 and 0 start that you're off to. And just what's gone into that heater to start off the NFL season uh, going alongside the New York football giants on an undefeated start through two weeks of football. Yeah, man. So I'm in a, I'm in a few of them. Uh, the Circa, I had a buddy of mine who signed it up, but um, he's like really loaded. He's, he's one of those dudes, but he, uh, I do the picks for him. So it's like my entry. Um, and I also do like bet online. I do another, a couple other stuff like those, like independent ones also. And I have started 10 and 0. Um, I think overall it's like 16 and two as well. A lot of dogs, dogs have been crushing to start the year. And I want to just circle back real quick. I will come back to this, but going back to the, like the being authentic stuff, I post all my tickets before they happen after they happen i i'm a big fan of the clown emoji when like a bad pick happens i'll i'll throw that up there too so like it's very like the authenticity is like i post the tickets before they happen how much i put whatever it might be you want to tail you want to whatever you want to do that's you but like i don't just show the winners like i i love showing the things that are wrong because especially with sports betting being so new people are going to run into some individuals that sell their picks or are just, you know, I'm up 3000 units. And it's like, I've never had a losing week ever. It's like, well, you're now you're capping. You're not a handicapper, right? Like you're just lying now with all this. So I try to always like, I always post my picks, win, lose or draw. Like, you know, it is what it is. That's the game. Now going back to the picks, uh, it's, it's been a really hot start. I mean, it's been a perfect start and I, I enter the same things all the time. The picks that I give out on, on, on dub club, the picks that I give out on my show, like those are the ones that I'm playing. And 
I just, I've just been able to, the thing that's really interesting is the first couple of weeks, if you have strong conviction on certain teams, you have a massive edge over these lines. And what I mean by that is I was big on the Titans being an under team. I, I think my favorite bet across all of football was under nine and a half wins. Like I couldn't believe it was nine and a half. Right. So coming into the year, I was like, they're not going to be good. So I'm going to take the Giants catching six and a half points in week one. I'm going to take Buffalo catching, giving 10 points. Like they're awful. Like I have a rule of thumb. If your quarterback sucks and your offense sucks, I don't care how many points you're catching. If you're running into a juggernaut, you're not going to backdoor cover it. Like, no, you know who the best to bet on is Justin Herbert. Cause if that dude is catching with the hook, I'm taking him. I don't care where they're playing. So I was big on, I had Philly at 25 to one to have the best record in football. Right now it's eight to one. I just saw DraftKings putting out a post and I quote tweeted it. Like if y'all were listening, you would have got it at a better number. So teams that you're big on. And if you have a strong conviction on these teams, everybody was off Kansas city in week one. Cause they lost Tyree kill. It's like, dude, they're playing Arizona on my show. I say, he's throwing five, six touchdowns with these. He threw five. So if you have a strong sense of what these teams are going to be from a long-term standpoint in the preseason, coming into weeks one, two, three, you don't really get the markets to overcorrect until about week five, I, I personally think. So there's still some lines that make no sense in week three. And I've already bet. I've already put four of the five games in my, in my contest picks already. So uh, that's like the biggest thing for me and why I've had success to come out the year. It's been trusting the years of doing this and the information that I have and just like strong convictions, man, just gut plays that, that I stand by. It's so interesting because you also shared in a prior combo, you're a big futures guy. So what you're saying about conviction is really like a proxy for futures, right? And, and the Eagles future that you talked about that plays out with, you know, lines being mispriced week one, two, three, four. So it's a really interesting thought that like September is the time to strike in terms of leveraging all that great research you did in the off season to start the season, like a bat out of hell. Yeah, dude. And, and futures might be my, my favorite thing to bet on. And I know futures are, especially in, in sports betting and, and like the handicapping space from what I've gathered all these years, it's like a lot of people don't like futures because you're, you're, you're handcuffing your money for three, four, six months down the line. But if you think about it, if you're a fantasy football player, you play yearly fantasy, isn't that the same thing? Right. Aren't you giving, mm -hmm. uh, I play in one fantasy league with my friends. It's a $500 buy-in. We wanted to get it to a thousand. But then my one friend is like a pizza delivery guy. He's like, dude, that's that's a little excessive, right? Like, come on, let's let's stop at five hundred. Everyone has like, you know, it's like half your paycheck for a week for pretty much all my friends. So we're like, fuck it, let's do that, right? Nice size pot, all cash at the end. So, and I would tell people that's the analogy that I compare it to. Like, if you're playing fantasy football, season starts in September. Championship game is what around Christmas. All right, it's another month, and then you're at the Super Bowl. So it's the same kind of concept. And, you know, people people are always hunting for these 50, 60, 120 to 1 props, uh, parlays, same game parlays. Well, I have a future at 120 to 1 on Bills, Bills Eagles to be the Super Bowl. Sorry, Bill, uh, Chargers Eagles to be the Super Bowl. And at 95 to 1, I have one on Eagles and Bills to be the Super Bowl. And right now on some books, Eagles Bills is nineteen to one, so I'm feeling like a, a like a sharp right now with with those odds. So I love futures, man. It, it, it's cool. It gives me something to root for uh, that has nothing to do with my favorite team. You know, you, you start becoming fans of certain teams. Last year, I had the Rams at, at fifteen to one at Fanduel when I was back home, and and it was uh, I, I became I knew the Rams inside out because every week I'm following them. You know, so you. Like, I'll forever love Cooper Cup for what he did last year in Matthew Stafford. But to me, like, futures are futures are very interesting. They're fun, right? And a lot of them are sucker bets. But as long as you know that they are, they're also a good time, right? Like, rushing yards leader, those are super volatile. Like, even if you're the favorite, 
you could pull a hamstring, miss two weeks, burn that ticket. You ain't going to be able to cash that. So as long as you know that these fun player props and long shots are sucker bets and, and you just want to have a good time and monitor something, I'm all for it. And I think I spend more money on futures in August, September than I do on like my betting handles throughout the year. When you, so going back on like the idea of building conviction and using that in your weekly bets too, how much are you, is your weekly monthly handle being informed by the teams that you've got futures on? Cause you've already kind of validated, Hey, I like the Eagles. I like the bills. Is that where you start working down your slate every Sunday or is it totally independent and it's just like something you root for on the side? Uh, does that question make sense? It does, yeah. And and my answer is ready. I bet numbers, not teams. So every week, it's <laughs> it's when I look through the slate, first glimpse, I do put a lot of my bets in early. Um, you know, using this week as an example, yep. I, took, I took Minnesota at minus four and a half. It's up to six. I took Kansas City. Minus three and a half, it's up to seven. Like these are wild line movements out here that I've been able to to shop and find. Uh, I'm waiting on Miami. I think Miami being a dog is is kind of funny. Buffalo coming off these massive wins on prime time. The prime time factor, that's something that I always look at. I almost by default, if a team looks really, really good on prime time, uh, unless the line is is right in what I think, I'll take them. But most of the times, I kind of always just fade them. So I, I bet numbers, not teams, man. And the amount of times that my friends will ask me what my, what the plays are and I'll give them a pick. They'll be like, nah, yo, it's a lock. I'm like, Oh, I feel so much better about that pick. Now, you know, last week I put out a post, I put out a post last week and it was, it was about Dak Prescott and the Cowboys after week one, prior to the Sunday night football game, the slate came out with the lines the next week. Cowboys were a two and a half point favorite at home against the Bengals. Dak goes down. They're a seven-point underdog at home against the Bengals. Dak to Cooper Rush is not a nine-point swing. We've seen Cooper Rush step in and play backup. Hostile environment on the road. And one of the picks in, in the contest that I put were Cowboys plus seven. And then I said they are a very, very, very live dog. And they ended up winning outright. So... It's it's finding mm-hmm. finding the numbers, man, because the teams the teams it could be very very misleading. You know, San Francisco last week was my favorite bet on the board. Everyone's like, "Oh, Seattle, Geno Smith." I'm like, "You guys are crazy. <laughs> you guys are crazy." Awesome. Well, uh, easy. You got anything for Nick before we let him go? I know your Wi-Fi is kind of spotty, so we've been we've been saving your voice today. I liked listening to you guys talk. That was oh. uh, that was awesome. You know, Nick, Nick, you got a really interesting perspective, and I think uh, I think Lewis really brought that out in you too. I think he uh, he asked the right questions. So um, I was going to ask a couple of questions about the slate, but that's just me kind of nerding out and want to get free betting picks. But um, <laughs> no, I, I loved having you on, and this is this has been a blast just to kind of be in the background and listen a little bit. Usually I'm the one running it, and now I just kind of get to sit back and relax and, and hear you hear some some smart guys talk, which is always cool. Yeah, well, man, I mean... To get the place, dubclub.win, backslash R, backslash Nick Days. There you go. There you go. Had to plug it. I love it. I love it. Thank you. I was Thank waiting you. for you to do that, Lou. I was waiting for it. <laughs> Silver platter. But Nick, seriously, this yeah. is awesome. You're one of the the true good guys in the industry, authentic, real. 24 seven. I hope people enjoy listening and hearing more about your story. Always, always great. Uh, jamming out in the, in the studio. Yeah, man, this was awesome. I appreciate it. You get, you served me up some questions that I was not, uh, I haven't had a chance to answer or to even tell that story really. So that was pretty cool. And, you know, lastly on this dub club thing, like, uh, NFL, um, big on soccer. And I think the sport that I've become the biggest fan of, right now and it's the sport that i think is my favorite to wager on is ufc uh ufc is really really fun from a non-betting standpoint if you ever have a chance to go to an mma event you will become a massive fan it is an unbelievable event i'm not being paid by the ufc but it's it's just amazing 
And uh, it's, it, it's another sport where I think it's still new. The markets are still new and adjusting. And uh, I'm in early on UFC, man. And, you know, I, I like it when people praise, like, the work that I do. But when it comes to UFC, I, I do feel like I'm at the top of the food chain when it comes to handicapping that. So you'll be getting something really exciting and, and uh, fresh to make some money on Saturdays, which is once a week also, right? So it has that, has that NFL feel to it as well. Mm-hmm. You heard the man. Yeah. Go check out his dub club. Uh, really interesting content, consistent across those major sports. There's not too many dull days, uh, weekend and, and catching soccer midweek, uh, especially with the European leagues coming back sooner rather than later. Uh, so awesome stuff, Nick. Uh, and thanks for, for hopping on the show. We should do this again. It was a pleasure, guys. Just fill me in. Let me know.